Okay, so first things first, with MIDI, you need to understand what it is. So MIDI is basically a digital signal. So uh, if we're going to press a key on a digital keyboard, it is going to send a bit of information to our computer, which is going to interpret that, and then we can apply that signal to an instrument, and the instrument will interact with that signal, figure out that you're pressing the note of C, uh, and then it'll create that sound inside of the instrument, which will go to our speakers, which will go to our, our ears. So if we've got a MIDI keyboard, we're sending digital information. So when we're pressing our key on a keyboard, it's also sending velocity information, so how hard we press the key. Um, it can also pick up information like how quickly we took our button, a finger off of the button, um, and all sorts of other things like that. So the signal works as a value between 127 and 1. So anything along that spectrum. So if we're hitting our key very hard, as hard as we can, then the velocity is being registered as 127. If we're hitting it as soft as possible, it's being registered as 1. And then if we're hitting it anywhere in between, then it's being registered somewhere along that spectrum. Okay, so it's important to remember that MIDI is simply a digital signal. It does not have a sound character. It can't have a sound character. The synthesizers or the VST, the virtual instruments that we use, they have sounds and they interpret the MIDI information in order to generate their sounds. So um, when I'm pressing buttons on my keyboard, it is sending an electrical signal, and then if I assign that electrical signal to an instrument, that instrument will make the sound, go to the speakers, etc. So that is what MIDI is. So let's have a look at how we manipulate MIDI and how we set up MIDI clips and that sort of thing. So first things first, we've got two MIDI channels that are automatically dropped into Ableton when we open a new project. So if we wanted to create another MIDI clip, how would we do that? Because maybe we've already used these two MIDI clips and we want some more. What we can do is we can actually right click in the area over here. So yeah, anything from this bar onwards, we can kind of right click in there and it gives us the option to insert a MIDI track or to insert an audio track. And we're able to click that and drop something in. If we right click that again, you can see that Control Shift T is the hot the hot key that we can use to do that. So I'm going to select, I'm going to Control Shift and T and that can drop a new clip in for me. If I select down the bottom, go Control Shift T, it's going to drop it down there. So I can kind of, if I want the the clip to drop below this one, I can click on that channel, go Control Shift and T, and it's going to drop the new one just below it. Okay. If we want to move them around once we've dropped them in, we can grab them and we can pull them up. And auto Ableton is automatically renaming all of these for me. But if I want to name it manually myself, I can go control R and I can say MIDI one, control R, MIDI two, press tab and it'll go down to the next one automatically for me, MIDI three, okay? So I've got three MIDI channels. I'm gonna click the fourth MIDI channel and hold shift and click the bottom one and I'm gonna press delete so I get rid of them all. So I can just quickly show you, if I grab this guy, I can click on the name and hold and drag them up, and I can rearrange them, re rearrange them. So I can put them in any sequence that I want, but I want them in one, two, three. So right click, insert MIDI track, or Control Shift T. Um, if I quickly just open up my uh, browser, so you can see, I can go ahead and go um, create and insert audio track or insert, insert audio clip. So if I like to open up menus, I can do that. So let's go back. Um, alrighty, so how do we actually create some MIDI content to go on these MIDI channels? Because at the moment, everything is blank. So what we need to do is we need to first start off by selecting an area. So we can select from 1 uh, all the way to 2 to make a 1 bar loop. And what we would like to do is we'd, we'd like to create a MIDI clip. Because once we've got a clip, we can store information inside of that clip. So if I go Control shift M, that is the hotkey for creating a MIDI clip. If I go Control Z to remove it, I can show you that if you select the area when you're on a MIDI channel and you right click, you can insert MIDI clip. See, so now this yellow clip is my MIDI clip.
I can um, now see down here that there's a piano roll um, and I'm able to then start drawing notes in. So what we can do is um, we can go ahead and um, maybe we'll drop that away and we'll pull that up a bit um, and I'll squish myself up here a little bit. So now I'm looking at the piano roll and let's say we're going to be using the scale of C. So if we um, pop an instrument on this channel then we'll be able to start hearing a sound. So what I'll do is I'll actually open that up again. I'll go instrument, I'll go um, operator and I'll get us a synth. That's fine. We'll grab that guy. We'll click him and we'll drag him onto the channel. And then we can make that disappear again. Let's clip on, click on our clip. And then if we click down here, we actually look at the clip view. So again, that's how we toggle between seeing the extra instrument and effects and seeing the clip. So if we double click um, on here, we can draw notes. So again, depending on what our grid is showing, if we double click, it'll write a note as long as um, the denomination that we've got set in here. So if I set that to halves and I double click there, it's writing a half note. If I set that to one eighths, it's writing a one eighth note. I can click in a gray area and drag to select everything and then go delete. Okay. So I might want to write um, notes like this. So if I press play, we can hear that that is now playing a note. Okay, so we can um, shorten it by, if I turn the grid off altogether, I can just grab the end and I can shorten or lengthen. Um, so, oh, my computer's just uh, having a bit of a breakdown. Um, so I can make those clips sort of whatever length I would like. Um, and what I can also do is I can modulate a couple of other parameters in here. So at the moment, I can see that there's this little dude down the bottom. This is showing me the velocity. So essentially, it's showing me how hard the note is being hit or triggered. Okay, so at the moment, it's getting hit at 100. So that is 100 strength out of a possibility between 127 and 1. So anything between 127 and 1 is the range of velocity. So 100 is relatively hard. If I put it all the way at the top, it's getting hit as hard as possible. If I put it all the way down at the bottom, it's getting hit as quietly as possible. So then anything in between there um, is kind of a half hit or whatever you'd want to call it. Um, so we can go ahead and we can do a couple of things with, with manipulating this. We can select the note by either clicking on it or dragging and selecting it. And then we can go control D to duplicate it. And then if we want to put the note on a different note, we can press the up or down arrows or the sideways arrows to move things around. Okay. So we can arrange a pattern by just going duplicate pressing down arrows, across arrows, up arrows to create our pattern. So now we've got something that sounds like this. Cool. So let's mix things up. Let's make things a little bit finer. We'll grab that. Um, now this, I don't intend this um, pattern to be musically correct or interesting in any way. I just want to give you an example of it. Um, so now we're doing this. Cool. And I could go ahead and I could select all of these clips and I could grab the end of them and I could make them all shorter or longer just by adjusting that. Cool. So um, I could also grab them from the beginning and pull them from the beginning. Um, so that's just a way that you can kind of mass adjust clips. So I could also select them all and then grab the, the velocity and pull them all down in velocity. Or I could pull them all up. Cool. Now, a cool way to make your um, your MIDI a little bit more human is by grabbing the individual velocity points and um, adjusting them. So we've got l loud, loud in volume, as loud as it can go. We've got kind of uh, lower in volume, even lower again, and then loud again. So listen to that effect. Cool. Um, so that's how you create a bit more of a human touch or human feel to your music. You could also go in here and... 
make fine adjustments. So rather than being rigidly on time, I can turn the grid off and I could see that note. And maybe I could just offset it just a little, little bit just to give it a bit more of a human feel. Um, so I can move that back and maybe I can move that one, maybe even move that forward. Uh, and that gives it a bit of a, a bit more of a human touch. It's not so rigidly in time like a robot. Um, so that is how um, we could write notes in and we can change the velocity of those notes. So just remember, if you were pressing on this keyboard here, we can't actually drop a note in there. We have to be clicking on the gray area between the numbers, okay? If we enable this little headphone guy, we can audition the notes as we press them. If we turn that off, uh, we can fold. So what fold does is it only shows us the notes that we've actually drawn in. So if we've got shitloads of stuff going on, then we want to just see the notes that we've actually drawn. We don't want to see all the space in between. We can fold it. We can see what we've just done. Cool. Um, this is going to drop away or uh, show us the velocity controls down here as well, by the way. So again, inside of our MIDI clips, we've got the same sort of parameters as what we have um, for audio clips. So inside of here, I can go um, synth. Cool. And I can name that synth. I could do the same by clicking on the actual clip and going control R and going synth. Cool. Um, so I can rename it. I can change the color of it. I can change all of the groove elements and that sort of thing. Again, we've got very similar things. I can speed it up or I can make it slower so I can double and um, shorten the length of things. Um, I can reverse the pattern. Cool. Or invert it. So there's a couple of cool ways that you can manipulate stuff. Legato will make all of the notes as long and they'll basically run into one another. Um, so if I go control Z, I can go back um, and I can double my loop. So I can just keep kind of adding to it, so to speak. Um, we've got MIDI bank selects. Um, and that sort of thing. So if I want to go to a MIDI bank and pull MIDI information in, I can do that. Or I can save it to a particular location. Um, we've got the start points and end points of the MIDI clip. So again, like the audio, we can adjust that and the loop positions. And then again, we've got all of the um, controls. But instead of being volume controls, we've got like pitch bends um, and all sorts of other controls that, um, that come from the instrument and other things. So that is the MIDI clips. Um, if we wanted to um, modulate there, uh, if we wanted to cut them up, I can select that area, I can go control E, I can move it around, I can put it there, I can control D, control D, control D to duplicate, I can select them all, I can go control J to consolidate it and put them all in one, I can do all sorts of things. So, um, manipulating MIDI is quite simple once you understand how to manipulate audio um, and all of the controls down here are relatively similar to the audios. So um, hopefully that gives you a good rundown of MIDI and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider subscribing on YouTube, following on Facebook. Alternatively, if you'd like to support me financially, jump over onto Patreon and become a patron or donate via PayPal. And don't forget, starting a new endeavor such as learning Ableton and electronic music production can be extremely overwhelming. So take things day by day and believe in yourself. Thank you.